the first. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you? Bruce, congratulations on 25 years. Um, give me the feeling right now, this is crazy, right? I mean, you're the center of attention all the time, staying in the octagon, but, but, but never like this. What's the, what's the feeling like right now? You know, it, it feels amazing because, like, this is a huge honor for me. You know how, John, of, of all people, you know how passionate I am about being the voice of the Octagon, working for Dana and all the powers that be at the UFC. I, I love it. And my passion just keeps getting stronger. I mean, I, I, I wish I had another 25 years. Who knows? Because I'm ready to rock and roll for 25 more. I just, I can't even imagine 25. It's just gone by so fast. Man, if there's ever an example of time flying, I guess this is it. But I want to thank the UFC for the beautiful tribute they did tonight. I did not expect that. That really caught me like a side shot to the head and just so beautiful. Th thank you. Thank you, my beloved UFC. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. It's crazy because, I mean, you've been here since almost the beginning, you know, a little bit after. But, I mean, yeah. you know, so much has happened. But when you hear that number, 25 years, I mean, what, what does it mean to you? I mean, did you ever imagine you, you'd be doing it this long? Well, it's 40% of my life, so that's a lot. Um, yeah, you know, the one thing I always tell everybody is that back in 1996 when I got involved with the UFC, I realized this was going to be the biggest thing happening in fighting sports. I realized it was probably going to be the biggest thing in sports. And that's why I stuck with it. When you stick with something, when I set a goal, I stick with it to the end. I'm a loyal soldier. I wanted to do everything I could way beyond being the voice of the Octagon and the Octagon announcer for the UFC because I love the organization. I love the sport. I love the honor of announcing these female and male Octagon warriors, the greatest fighters in the world, some of the greatest people I've met, the friendships I've made, the relationships with the media, with fighters, you know, with the people I work with. It's, this is like Boy Scouts go to camp, man, every weekend. Let's face it. I love this. This is awesome. You know, when the honor was played tonight, I saw a lot of people on social media saying, listen, when Buffer does hang it up, like, this thing's just not going to be the same anymore. Nobody can replace him. I mean, when you hear that, what, what, what do you think? I mean, I know you believe in the company and you believe in the brand, but when people say it's going to be missing something when you do walk away, what do you think? You know, when it comes to my time, when I announce my retirement, which won't be again for years, when my passion wanes, then I'm going to retire. That's just the way it is. I mean, I'm the first one to cash the paycheck on a Monday morning at the bank, like anybody else, but I'm not in this for the money. I'm in this for the love of what I do. I'm a fan first and an announcer second. And as far as it never being the same, the bottom line is, you know, we all make our mark in life. And when I leave, I just hope that people respect the fact that I always gave 100 plus percent. I always gave my all. I always put my passion into it to enhance this moment for the fighters and for the fans. And, you know, I did it the way I did it. I did it my way, as Sinatra says. And somebody else will come along and they'll do it their way. You know, I can only answer for what I do when I do it. And I love what I do. And that's all I can tell you. Right, it's the last thing for me, Bruce. Uh, you know, obviously you, you go where they tell you to go and do what they tell you to do. And I know you're always willing. But are there any, like, check marks left that you want to do? Are there places that you want to go? Is there some kind of presentation? I mean, is there anything left that you want to do before you do hang it I, up? I've had a lot of bucket lists uh, that have been... Um, crossed out and there's more to come as far as uh, in the UFC I just want to continue to announce these great warriors um, I've had the Super Bowl commercial but I would love to be on the field for the Super Bowl one day announcing everybody coming out of the tunnel and start up the game I've done it for the NFL the NBA hockey baseball I've done it for all the sports you know so there's always another accomplishment there's always another mountain to climb and I'm always open for a challenge you know let me parachute out of a plane and and parachute into a stadium and yell it's time as i land i'll do it you know you ask me to i'm there i'm always game for something bruce uh, in the front over the last 25 years we've obviously seen not just the sport but the organization kind of unveil things yeah. that probably not a lot of people expected but i'm sure you've kind of become i don't think desensitized is the word but i don't know if you can be caught off guard by anything anymore but is there anything the last 25 years that has genuinely like you just did not expect whether it be the sale the espn deal the reebok deal or anything you know the expectations i had for the ufc were always high like i said earlier i knew it was going to be the biggest thing in fighting sports if not the biggest thing in sports when dana white and the fertitta brothers bought the ufc in 2009 when we were down to maybe 1500 people in the audience we were off in demand we're only on direct tv and the internet and the fans are keeping us alive i knew that was the savior and then when they took it and they managed it the way they did, and then when the tough finale of the very first Ultimate Fighter happened and, you know, we saw them go out at Bonner and Forrest, it was another level, another level of achievement. And then when WME bought it and they made that big sale, it was another level of achievement. The beautiful thing about the UFC is every time I think I've seen the greatest fight 
or the greatest show. It's like three months later, I see the greatest fight or the greatest show. The UFC always brings entertainment. It never goes stale, and it's only getting better. And, and a lot of that, if not all of it, is due, again, to the powers that be. You've got to really... I, I thank and I, and I bow to Nate every time I see him for his passion, for his diligence, for his goal setting, for him to keep this going the way it's going. Even after selling it for $4.2 billion, and he's still keeping it the way it's going. I mean, how can you not want to work for people like that? Has an idea ever been presented to you that you thought probably like you thought to yourself like there's no possible way that could happen and then of course they pull it out? No, no. I think the only thing that ever happened to me is when I severed an ACL inside the octagon. I never thought that would happen, or you know some of the other situations I've been in. But it doesn't matter. I can I can do this with one leg. I can do this with a busted back. I can do it with the flu. I can do it with laryngitis. And trust me, I've done it after a major operation. I've never even told you about. The bottom line is. These warriors are fighting, okay? I can get in there and always do my job to honor them. That's my job. That's, it, the show's not about me. It's about them. I serve them, and I serve the fans, and I serve you. Bruce, over here. Uh, uh, just real quick, right here on your left. Hi, how are you? I think it's safe to say you've loved the game, and the game has loved you back. Thank just you. out of curiosity, uh, you know, you've done so many announcements. What is the most nervous you've ever been to go out there for partic for any reason, any show? The very first show, Bayam on Puerto Rico, February 16th, 1996. I got nervous then. I got nervous maybe for my first full show at UFC 10. But it's like a fight. Whenever I fought, as soon as I got punched in the face or punched somebody in the face, then it's on. You know, let's just get it done. I don't get nervous. I get excited. I get rushes of adrenaline. You see the way I am before I go out for the main event. I'm getting my head in the game. I have to give it my all. Every night I walked out there is my first night to prove to Dana, the powers that be, the fans, the fighters, yourselves, and myself that I deserve this job. And I'll be the first one to leave when I don't think I deserve it. Trust me. Was there one show that you remember just everything seemed to happen, you didn't think you were going to make it to that show to announce them? and you just did it was what's that one for Bruce Buffer I've always made every show but I probably the egg on that uh, Joe Rogan and the fans gave me for six or seven months to pull a 360 in front of Brock Lesnar or at UFC 100 you know I was kind of surprised that that came off the way it did but you know when you say you're gonna do something and I say I'm gonna do something I'm gonna do it I'll always back it up obviously it's family business announcing somehow with Michael Buffer one night only, just out of nowhere, do you think you'll ever say, you know, let's get ready to rumble, just randomly for the fun of it? Absolutely not. That is Michael Buffer's. That is his. He created it. It's about him. It's always going to be about him, just like it's time is about me. I respect that. I never wanted to be Frank Sinatra Jr. I wanted to stand on my own laurels and be Bruce Buffer, and that's exactly what I set out to do. I told myself for two years after I started this job in 96, if I couldn't develop my own style, I was going to quit. I didn't want to be the guy. I'm the guy that sews his coattails on. I didn't want to be the guy riding the coattails. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay, Everybody, thank you so much. Listen, the media, without you guys, I appreciate everything. It's an honor. Thank you.